So saying? The Love Witch, which is uh, the new film from uh, Anne Biller, who directs, who writes, who designs, who edits, who composes, who costumes, who generally everything you can see on screen is there because she put it there. She's okay? a control freak. <laughs> yeah, so... Now, I would say that the best way of describing this is that it's all that heaven allows directed by Jess Franco or it's Vampiros, it's Douglas Sirk's Vampiros Lesbos. So um, it, it, I should also say... I haven't say, seen any of those. No, before. but I should also say that that is not how the director would describe it. It exists in a world that looks like the late 60s, early 70s of uh, Beyond the Valley of the Dolls, but in which mobile phones are available. So it's an alternative present or near future, despite the fact that everything about the milieu is, you know, it's, it's a fantastical milieu. So Samantha Robinson is Elaine, who is this white witch. Um, imagine, what's the best way of describing it? Imagine a sort of non-domesticated, more independent and fully empowered version of Elizabeth Montgomery's... Oh, uh, in Bewitched. In Bewitched, what yes. A show. OK. So she arrives uh, to a, a new apartment after the failure of a previous relationship. She's looking for love, but a very, very specific kind of love. She is a witch. She is a white witch. There are other witches around and they, you know, they have uh, love magic and that kind of thing. <laughs> but she's looking for a very, very specific kind of love, for somebody who will, you know, love her for what she is, but will also be... So the film is full of very arch... Very, very, um, uh, very funny, very knowing conversations about what men and what women want from the world. Suitors abound and many of them fall under her spell. But many, if not most of them, turn out to disappoint and wind up not in a good state. Here is a conversation between her and a friend in a tea shop where somebody is playing a harp in a background. Were we? <laughs> oh, uh, men. You said we need to give them what they want. Well, what do men want? Just a pretty woman to love and to take care of them and to make them feel like a man and to give them total freedom in whatever they want to do or be. <laughs> but what about what we want? How are we going to be equals with men if we keep catering to all of their needs? I think that if you want love, you have to give love. Giving men sex is a way of unlocking their love potential. You sound as if you've been brainwashed by the patriarchy. Your whole self-worth is wrapped up in pleasing a man. Isn't that a great line? You sound it, like you've been brainwashed by the patriarchy. It so, sounds as though there's not a lot of cheesecloth in that. A lot of cheesecloth, yes. And, uh, and the whole thing is shot with this very, very sort of tactile, you know, celluloid sense. And meanwhile, in the background, there's kind of these Kenneth Anger style uh, uh, magic sequences. What does that mean? Um, how's the best to describe it? They are like in incantatory magic sequences with, uh, you know, uh, with ritualistic symbols and, uh, uh, you know, and spells okay. and that sort of thing. When the men start going missing, the police turn up, but even the uh, even the chief of police is not uh, immune to the uh, to, to the spells of uh, the the titular love witch. Now, I really like this film. I thought it was f I smiled all the way through it. I thought it was funny and uh, and cheeky and uh, uh, and you know sort of weirdly subversive. But what's interesting is I have to say that almost everything I like about it is something that the director doesn't particularly like about it. So, for example. I thought it was, you know, ripe and camp and I thought it was bathed in a nostalgia for the kind of, you know, uh, horror and sexploitation movies of the late 60s and early 70s. I loved the sort of physicality. I thought it was joyously parodic. There's uh, an interview with uh, Anne Biller in uh, Sight and Sound magazine in which she says it's not any of those things. It's influenced by Douglas Sirk and Hitchcock. It's not camp. It's not parodic that she's not actually interested in uh, Russ Mayer and all that sort of stuff. And I think what's really fascinating about it is two things. Firstly, and also, it's being released under the Fright Fest Presents label, which is there a horror, you know, horror festival, despite the fact it's not a horror film, although it has elements of uh, horror stuff in it. And I think it's a really interesting case of trust the tale, not the teller. What filmmakers bring put, put into their films and what you get out of your films are two different things. And I think the most important thing here is if you enjoy the film as much as I did and as much as other people I know them, who felt similarly that it's riffing on those ideas, then it doesn't matter exactly whether or not the director, not just, you know, director, writer, editor, person who's in total So control. she might be wrong? No, it's not to do with, with her being wrong. I mean, she knows what film she's made, 
but the way in which the film plays and the way in which the film is described may not be quite the same thing. I mean, there are the highlights. I mean, there's one fantastic sequence in which um, our heroine with the police chief, who I uh, spoke of earlier, um, they're wandering through the through the the sort of you know the countryside, and they suddenly come across this kind of medieval fair in which everyone looks like a me- like a member of the cast of The Wicker Man, and they suddenly have this really strange marriage ceremony that you keep imagining at any moment somebody's going to start building a Wicker Man in the background and set fire to it. So it's or it's it has the same sense of, of hot fuzz, funnily enough, which was referenced earlier and earlier in terms of King Kong. There is that sense of that going along the back. And if I have a criticism at all, it's that it's it's perhaps a little long, but that feels like criticising it for being overindulgent when the film itself is a glorious indulgence. I think it's smart, for, whether for the right or the wrong reasons. I thought it was smart and funny and I really enjoyed it and I can... It's interesting that people can take different things away from it, that you can read it in many different ways. I just think it's it, it, what you can tell is that the thing that she is deadly serious about is the attention to detail, is getting everything absolutely right, is getting all those things, you know, absolutely in the right place and making sure the film is everything in the mise en scene, everything about it, everything that you see on screen is there for a reason and a purpose, right down to the gaps between dialogue, which seemed to me to deliberately mimic an, an older form of cinema. I want to go and see it again because I really, really enjoyed it.